My name is Doug Parker, host of the Cruise Radio Podcast, and today we're going to take a look back at some changes made by Carnival Cruise Line in 2019. They sure saw a lot, including a brand new ship, a completely refurbished ship, and other changes, everything from dress code to soda choices. Before we get to the changes, if you like this video and you want to see more, subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. So there were a whole lot of changes, both big and small, made at Carnival Cruise Line over the past 12 months. And we're going to take a look at the 15 biggest, really in no particular order. And if there's a change you think that should have made the list, but I didn't mention it, please let me know in the comments below. So number one is the service gratuity increase from 15% to 18%. It was announced earlier this year that Carnival would increase the service gratuity to beverages from 15% to 18%. According to the cruise line, from this 3% increase, 1.5% will go to the server, and then the other 1.5% will go into an employee pool, which will help the itinerary stipend pay, uniforms, and return home airline tickets, things like that. Moving on to number two, the chef's table menu changed. In 2019, the chef's table experience saw a brand new menu that included sea bass, celery root pastrami, duck, lamb, sirloin, and this new chocolate dessert. And the menu aside, some ships also saw a chef's table get a fancy new space, including that on Carnival Sunrise. Number three, you can now pre-book specialty restaurants on the cruise manager. Instead of having to email for a specialty reservation before your cruise, Carnival added the functionality to make the reservation while you're booking your cruise within the cruise manager. Reservations are refundable before or on embarkation day, with the exception of the chef's table. There is a $25 cancellation fee there. Number four created quite a stir, eliminating butter and sugar packets. In effort to eliminate waste, the cruise line quit using butter and sugar packets. Instead of butter packets, they're now using butter dishes on your table and then a communal butter dish on the Lido Deck Buffet area. They also eliminated cereal boxes. Instead, they're now using that same sort of dispenser you see in hotels or at the stores that sell bulk foods. Number five, no more straws. Speaking of eliminating waste, cruise lines in general and Carnival in particular have been making a major effort into trying to remove as much plastic as possible from the waste stream. With that in mind, Carnival slowly but surely has been eliminating plastic straws. This began when they started using sugar-based edible straws for frozen drinks. Guests now have the option to also purchase reusable silicone or stainless steel straws from the bars, or they can always bring their own straws on board. But if you do bring your own straw on board, maybe consider bringing a paper straw. I mean, no need to counteract the cruise line's environmental efforts, right? Number six, Carnival modified their dress code in response to complaints about things like t-shirts with inappropriate sayings printed on them. Carnival modified their dress code to read, all guests are expected to ensure their clothing and accessories are respectful to fellow cruisers. Specifically, items worn during the cruise should not contain any message that may be considered offensive or contain nudity, profanity, or have sexual innuendos or suggestions. Of course, the big question is, who decides what's offensive and who will actually confront that person? We'll have to see how this plays out. Number seven, Dr. Seuss breakfast was increased by a dollar. The Dr. Seuss character breakfast was increased from $5 to $6. It's worth noting that the price is still the same for both kids and adults. This breakfast is normally held on the last sea day of the cruise, and it's a great opportunity for you to get a picture taken with some of Dr. Seuss's most popular characters. Now, food-wise, they offer a selection of whimsical breakfast creations, and yes, they do have greed eggs and ham on the menu. Change number eight is the drink package increased. The drink package went up on short cruises, meaning the cruises that last three or four days. Technically, this doesn't go into effect until January 1st of 2020, but since they announced it at the end of 2019, I'm including it here. The price for the Cheers beverage package went up $3 per day, so it went up to $54.95 per day plus gratuity if purchased before the cruise, and $59.95 per day plus gratuity if purchased on board. 
Now, guests who are sailing cruises five days or longer, they won't have to worry about this. The drink package remains the same at $51.95 per day or $56.95 if you buy it while you're on board the cruise. In the grand scheme of things, this isn't that bad, especially when you consider Norwegian Cruise Line charges $118.80 per day when you include their 20% service charge. Number nine, the app check-in is now available for anytime dining. This is a change that some people might not want me to share because it makes getting a table so much easier. But guests can now check in for anytime dining on the Carnival Hub app. So instead of waiting in a long line at the designated check-in desk and then given a pager, waiting for the pager to go off and then getting your table... Now you can just use your app and check in online. In other words, you can keep hanging out by the pool or enjoying a pre-dinner drink at the Alchemy Bar instead of standing in line. The 10th change is a new ship is now sailing from the West Coast. The launch of the new ship like Carnival Panorama is always a big deal, but even a bigger deal since this marked the first time in over two decades that Carnival was homeporting a brand new ship on the West Coast. Carnival Panorama is currently sailing seven-night Mexican Riviera cruises out of Long Beach, California. In case you're wondering, the last Carnival ship to debut on the West Coast was Carnival Elation back in 1998. The 11th change, Carnival Splendor left the U.S. market. Carnival Splendor said goodbye to North America and headed over to Singapore for a massive renovation before making her Australia debut. Believe it or not, before the renovation, Splendor was one of the few ships, actually one of a couple ships, that did not have a Guy's Burger joint. The other one is Carnival Miracle, but that should happen in 2020. A fun fact, when Splendor sailed from Long Beach to Singapore, the 24-day transatlantic sailing was the longest cruise ever offered by Carnival in their almost 50-year history. Number 12, Carnival rolled out a new military bar. When Carnival's president, Christine Duffy, picked up the Carnival Panorama from the shipyard in October, she had an idea for a space that would be a tribute to the members of the armed forces, but still maintain the feel of a sports bar. The result was Heroes Tribute Bar. The patriotic space not only honors members of the various armed forces, but also has that sports ticker in big screen TVs, things that you would have found in the Skybox Sports Bar, which was originally slated to occupy this space. Now, this is a first of a kind on any Carnival ship, but there are already plans to see it added to other ships in the future. Number 13, Carnival moved their final payment due dates on cruises. Now cruises that are six to nine days long, your final payment is due 90 days before sailing. It was previously 75 days. And then on any cruises from two to five days in length, your final payment is due 75 days before your cruise. Before this change, final payment due date has been 60 days for years. Change number 14, Mardi Gras delayed. They say good things come to those who wait, and as we found out in late December, that would be the case for Carnival Mardi Gras. The ship, which was supposed to debut in August of 2020, ran into a few delays in the shipyard, and as a result, the first eight cruises had to be canceled, and she'll now make her inaugural sailing on November 14th of 2020. Now, since Carnival Mardi Gras is a game-changing prototype for Carnival, It's not really surprising that they encountered a few delays. For one thing, the shipyard is dealing with installing new technology and moving parts of this liquefied natural gas system. The sister ship to this one, the Costa Smeralda, also experienced the same issues earlier this year. And the last change that Carnival Cruise Line saw in 2019 was switching from Coke to Pepsi. If you happen to be a fan of Coke products, this decision probably wasn't too popular with you. Carnival made the decision to switch to Pepsi in late 2019. Now, while this change isn't going fleet-wide until January of 2020, the Pepsi products have already debuted on Carnival Panorama on the West Coast. And in case you're wondering, Norwegian Cruise Line also has a Pepsi partnership, so enjoy your Jack and Pepsi. All right, that'll do it for our 15 changes that Carnival Cruise Line saw in 2019. I may have missed some, and if I did, please put them in the comments below so I can take a look at it and see exactly what I missed. My name is Doug Parker. I'm the host of the Cruise Radio Podcast and the Daily Cruise Radio News Briefs. You can find both of those where you listen to your favorite podcast. Just search Cruise Radio or Cruise Radio News. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, feel free to subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. Also, check out all of our tours of the Carnival Cruise Line ships and other ships found on our YouTube channel at Cruise Radio.
What do you think about these 15 changes? I'm curious to see what you have to say. Some of them probably were operational tweaks, while the other ones were obviously money-saving and trying to get a little more greener and environmentally friendly. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and thank you so much for watching.